by about 15 months, I was beginning to think there might be a problem. I realised that he didn't refer back to us or to me in the way that I felt a child should. His language wasn't really developing at all. And nor did he seem to recognise images in a book, which I thought, you know, we'd looked at the same books over and over. He didn't ever seem to recognise them. So I was beginning to worry. There was a growing feeling from about one that something was changing, something wasn't quite right, and it accelerated between 18 months and two years. And at 20 months, we had the diagnosis. And then we got a second opinion from St Mary's, who saw him once and agreed with the diagnosis, but asked us to bring him back. And the second time, she said that she wasn't sure, which was a real problem I had. He was incredibly variable, so he had very good days and very switched off days. And I couldn't come to terms with the diagnosis because of the good days. You can prepare yourself as much as you like, but when the actual diagnosis comes and it's confirmed, it completely hits you like a you know, block of wood to the head. He just came out with it. I believe Oscar is on the autistic spectrum. He then said, have I scared you? Which um, was quite interesting because he hadn't scared us at all. He'd completely changed our lives forever. <laughs> and it was much more profound than scaring. But that's when we first first started to come to terms with it. Although I think you come to terms with it for, the, for your whole life, really. At that point, our understanding of autism was very little. But what we felt we knew was absolutely devastating. We researched it as far as we could, but really from old Encyclopedia Britannica's and strange old medical books, because the GP didn't know anything at all about it. And it described it in absolutely catastrophic terms. They called it a um, mental illness, most severe, for which absolutely nothing could be done. And really, it just seemed it was a devastating diagnosis. For years, I thought, in terms of the Oscar I'd had and this Oscar now. And it was a health visitor, not a doctor, who said, just focus on Oscar. Don't think about what might have been or what he's not going to be or what the doctors say. Just look at him. He's still your child. He started at Treehouse when he was five. And when he started, I would pick him up from school and he would walk past me as if he'd never seen me in his life, which was terrible. But within a few months, he was recognising me out of context or out of the context of the house. The staff have been boundlessly patient and energetic, but also aspirational and challenging. So they won't give up. He's developed a personality and he's formed relationships, really meaningful relationships, I think, with the teachers. So recently we were getting together information for his person-centred plan. We all had to write down what we thought were his qualities. And the teachers were writing things like generous and brave and charismatic. And I just thought he has a life totally independent from us, which is obviously what you'd want for your children. Mentally, I should think he is around 18 months, maybe. To give you an idea of the sort of learning, the school has taken about 18 months, maybe longer, to teach him to wash his hands. So very slow, but he's very pleased when he can do it. It's a very important part of his life experience, I think, that he does continue to learn. The great thing for me is that I feel when he's at Treehouse, he's with people who a completely understand what they're dealing with, which is in the rest of our lives is very, very rare. And B, they really care. They really care. And it's for me, it's the care that that is most important because he's so vulnerable. How he experiences the world is a mystery. And I've said a million times, if I could spend a month in his body, in his head, I would absolutely love to. I really want him to be happy and fulfilled, whatever that means going forwards. He is totally vulnerable at the moment. He's non-verbal, he has a very happy disposition, but he has no way of expressing if somebody's been unpleasant to him. Uh, so he's totally reliant on other people's goodness. Oscar's always going to need 24-hour-a-day care. You know, he, he'll always be 
dependent and need a lot of support. So we realise that now and personally I don't hope for him to be too far away from us anyway. You know, he adds so much to our lives, I think we want him to be either with us or very close to us for as long as we can. I think it takes a while really to see the positives of having a child with autism. I like to think it's changed us for the better. It's certainly changed our approach to our other two children. Our priorities are very different. We want our children to be happy and Oscar's really taught us that. We want them to fulfil their potential. But it's also made us look closely at our lives and enjoy the good bits. We take very little for granted.